Listen, man, you know, Samsung did it, okay? See, the problem with today's phones, I'm trying to get comfortable, okay? The problem with today's phones, oh, and if you hear a fart, it's not me, it's the chair. It might be me. The problem with today's phones is that they all look alike. You know, if you upgrade from the iPhone 11 or iPhone 10s Max and you get the 11 Pro Max, you don't feel like you got a new phone, right? You don't feel like you just went out and spent $1,100. You know, phones nowadays, they all look basically the same. It's, it's, a, it's a slab or slate device, whatever you want to call it. They don't look anything different. So whenever we see a, a, a very high price tag on a phone that is coming out soon or is already out, we start to really criticize the phone, as we should, right? Because phones nowadays are, are beginning to plateau. There isn't much we can do to a phone nowadays to really call it an upgrade. Making the battery bigger, the uh, the camera is a little bit better, the CPU a little faster, um, adding new colors. That's not really an upgrade. I mean, it is, but that's the upgrade that should be pretty obvious. Like, they shouldn't have to say, oh, we made the battery better because it... You, you, they should. It should be obvious. Like, for example, when you, when you were in school, you go up to your mom and say, Mom, I got an A. Now, I don't know about your mom, but my mom said, yeah, as you should, right? It's not something to brag about. Just because you made the cameras better than last year, you shouldn't have to, like, make that as as a big talking point. This, this intro is getting very long, by the way. So, the Galaxy Fold 2, I feel like it changes everything that we know about phones. The Galaxy Fold 2 pushes everything we know to a, a, a whole new level. Comparing the new design of the phone to the old design of the phone is really like comparing a car made in the mid 2000s to a car made in 2020. The upgrade truly is that massive. Thankfully this year, as you guys saw, uh, you know, Samsung made the entire front of the display or entire front of the phone, one big display. This is about as bezel-less as it's gonna get, because if it gets any more bezel -less than this, this phone is gonna get very uncomfortable to hold and use because it's basically two phones stacked up on each other. So I, I'm gonna call this design bezel -less, even though there is a small um, body-colored bezel going down over here. But this, to me, is bezel -less. This display, I'm not kidding you, you're gonna be using this display most of the time. All right, because when you open it up, you can't really use this one-handed. You cannot use this big old beautiful, look at that, man. It's a freaking mini iPad. That's awesome, man. Oh God, I love this phone. You're not gonna be using this with one hand. It's just not gonna happen. Most of the time, most of the time if you're going out, you're out and about, you're shopping around, you know, you got bags in this hand, you're gonna be using a phone like this with, with, this, um, with this display. And that's perfect because battery life is going to get a lot better comparing to the Note 20 Ultra because this display is obviously smaller than the Note 20 Ultra. Even the, the even the inside display, it, I mean, as you, it, it's, it's a full display. It, there are no bezels, honestly. This little ring around the, be on, uh, around the body, I don't consider that a bezel, okay? That's just the structure of the phone. If you take that away, the phone's gonna rip apart. So this phone truly is bezel-less. You do got a little camera cut out on, 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 the, on, you know, on the top, but comparing last year's model to this year's model, as I've said, is like comparing a, a very old car to a very new car. You can literally feel the difference as you use the phone. You can see the difference as you use the phone. And that is what truly makes an upgrade an upgrade is that if you can truly see it, feel it, forget about it. <laughs> you know, it's there, it's good, it works. The overall phone itself just looks magnificent. It, it, it literally looks like some sort of technology that we shouldn't even have today. Like it's... It, it, it is the future. It is 100% future. The new hinge is much better than last year's model, so you can pretty much put it virtually in any position you want. You can prop it up into a laptop style when watching YouTube videos, and you can even prop it up to shoot the night sky without shaking the phone um, you know, as you're holding it with your hand. So that way the images come out crystal clear. You can also turn it into selfie mode, and now you can have zoom calls or duo calls, whatever you do nowadays. 
And then uh, you don't have to put anything behind the phone to prop it up because you can just prop it up with the hinge and the hinge goes to, like I said, virtually any spot on the phone. I mean, dude, this phone is an upgrade like no other. The camera system on this phone, sure, okay, it's not as crazy as the Note 20 Ultra, but I think that's a good thing. The Note 20 Ultra's camera housing is so massive that it would just make the back of this look very awkward because it's, it's, a, it's a narrow phone when it's closed. So I'm happy it has this design. It's, it looks more elegant, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I just can't imagine this with the Note 20 Ultra's camera housing. It would just look very awkward. But don't let this fool you, man. This, this thing can shoot some serious photos. Take a look. Now, as I've said, the inside display had a, an upgrade and not just in terms of the actual design, but now it added 120 Hertz. And guys, let me tell you, I can't show you 120 Hertz through a YouTube video, okay? YouTube doesn't even have 120 Hertz option. But believe me when I tell you this, believe me when I tell you this, 120 Hertz on a display this big, let me unlock it. That would be probably a, a good idea. There you go. 120 Hertz on a display this big is so much better than on a, on a typical Note 20 Ultra. You can see it on the Note 20 Ultra, but here you can like feel it. Like it is... Dude, it's, it's, you know, I could look at this all day, to be honest. The Galaxy Fold 2, in my strong opinion, is the most expensive phone, I think, or, 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 or close to the most expensive phone uh, in terms of like consumer can go out and buy it anytime they want. And I truly believe that it is worth the price because think about it. You know, you come home, you want to show your friends and family something, you can do wireless decks to any TV that can support uh, casting. So you pretty much have like a little mini Chromebook in your pocket that you can cast to any TV you want. Then you sit on the couch, you want to watch some Marks, Marks Tech, you know, your favorite YouTuber, you plop it open into tablet mode, boom, you can enjoy my videos. I do my all, I do all my videos in 4K, guess what? So you can enjoy some nice content on this big display. After you're done watching my videos and after you subscribed and liked and comment, you can close the phone and enjoy it in one-handed mode. So you basically have a phone, a tablet, and like a mini Chromebook all in one. Is 2000 expensive? Y yeah. Yeah, I can get the 3090 from Nvidia and still have 500 bucks left over. I can get the 3090 and the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox uh, Series X and it'll be as much as this phone. Um, you know what, now that I think about it, I am going to ship you back. All jokes aside, I did get the PS5 pre-order, I was lucky, and I'm getting the Xbox Series X, so if you guys want videos of that, subscribe. Overall, I'm super impressed with the with the Fold 2. I mean, it's the only phone that is, is an upgrade and, and you see it, you see the upgrade. I mean, it, it's there. For example, this is the iPhone. What iPhone is it? What is it? You guys don't know. Because they all look alike, dude. Okay, hang on. This this one might be a little bit easier, but hang on. What iPhone is this? You guys are saying, oh, that's the SE. Well, how do you know? What? How do you know if it's not the 6? Huh? Huh? Yeah? All these phones are getting boring, dude. I'm not even excited when a new phone comes out. But with this phone, the Galaxy Fold 2, when it got announced and I saw YouTube videos of it, I turned into a fangirl. The one downside is that you do not get a case in the box like last year's model, and you do not get Galaxy Buds in the box like last year's model as well. So you're losing, you know, at most 100, well not at most, but you are losing $150, you know, worth of Galaxy Buds in the case, which is, you know, I wanna say maybe 20, 30 bucks. So you're losing, you know, something, but the experience of the phone makes up for it 100%. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you guys wanna see a more in-depth review coming up uh, later on in the week or maybe next week, definitely subscribe and hit that bell, uh, bell notification so you guys will be notified when that video is announced. So far, I love it. It still has that nice heft to it, so if you ever get mugged walking around the city, you can hit them in the head, and that's it. They will never be uh, bothering you again, that's for sure. The battery life so far, you know, I can't really speak a lot. I've only had this for less than 24 hours, but so far, 
it's better than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, which is very weird because they have the same capacity battery. Anyway, I'm done rambling. Thank you guys for watching. You guys are amazing. I love you. Subscribe. <laughs>